Hey there, Pan friends. Welcome to the channel again. It's me, your host, Amy from Pan Venture, and I'm very happy to be back from the Dutch Pan Show. We have met with a lot of people, and I am very, very grateful for everyone who attended the Pan Show. There is a lot of things that I need to catch up with, and today in this video, I'm going to take a closer look together with you at the latest Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in primary manipulation, Black Matter of Pearl and warm tones. There isn't too many things that stir the water for a fun pen lover and collector and for the fun pen community all together than putting these two names together, Leonardo of China Italiana, Jonathan Brooks and Primary Manipulation. Match made in heaven. So today we're going to experience the latest collection from Leonardo of China Italiana. And uh, I'm going to go through this review a little bit different and uh, I will try to point out the things that are usually not presented in other videos. Because why not? We've done a lot of Momento Zero Grande reviews and they are present on the Panventure YouTube channel. You can check them if you want to see specs and details. But in this video, I'm going to take a different route and try to point out things that I usually missed out in my other videos. And we're going to start as usual with the shopping experience, the box, everything that's inside. Then we will have a few details and uh, technical specs, side-by-side -side size comparison, writing sample, and in the end, I'm going to share some of my personal opinions and we are going to end the video. Let's head it off with the shopping experience. This is the box in which you are going to get your Momento Zero Grande fountain pen. Mother of Pearl and the warm tones have a different box, which I don't have here, but this one tells you a little bit of info regarding the color palette of the fountain pen, these colors. So let's see what we will find inside. And spoiler alert. This cardboard sleeves are very, very tricky to get off. So let's open the box. You have a booklet with information about Leonardo and their model, a black ink bottle, which is standard ink black, and the box in which you are going to find the pen right here. And now, let me show you these two beautiful pens that are part of this amazing collection. I'm going to put the box right here and let me showcase these fountain pens. First of all, the warm tones and it's two beautiful, beautiful trim colors. And now I'm going to show you the mother of pearl fountain pen. This has a silver color tone for the trim. Not only that, but it is available also in gold color trim. But in our instance, this is my personal fountain pen and all of the others from the limited edition collection are sold out. So I managed to keep this fountain pen for me. The most important thing is the material itself primary manipulation and uh, I could literally uh, have a video entirely done for this material. Now I'm going to point out a few aspects which I think are unique about this fountain pens. I'm going to start first with uh, the warm tones which is a little bit different and hear me out because usually there are two types of primary manipulation. The ones that have clear and solid parts of material and those that have shit toys. Usually Leonardo don't combine these two aspects. Only in this collection we find a uh, pen that doesn't have shit toys like this warm tone resin with this one which is the mother of pearl that has a lot a lot of shit toys. I have here a few examples of the primary manipulation fountain pens because I do collect them and have a look how beautiful is this chitoyant and this solid combined with transparent colors resins. 
they are stunning and it's very easy to understand why these fountain pens are so successful. These are two very beautiful colors and the warm tone have a few parts that are, uh, let's call it semi-transparent and, and sometimes transparent. It's white combined with orange and transparent red, yellow, and it is sublime. They look very, very good. Mother of Pearl is very, very nice. We have a dash of pink, black, white, uh, this minty green, and everything flows very well together. Let's head over and analyze a few details. I'm gonna base my review on the Mother of Pearl. Why? Because there is a second batch coming for all of the people that missed out on owning one, which is part of the limited edition. There is a chance, and now for this second batch, it's possible to have them in different trim colors. More on that later in the video. We have the finial on the top of the cap, which is conic and pointy, like with all Leonardo pants. The cap features a very, very nice shape, tapering out towards the cap band. We have the clip, which is pretty much the same in most of the Leonardo pants that I know, a uh, cap band configuration in three rings, two smaller ones, and in between we have a larger cap band with a very nice geometrical uh, pattern. We have the first clue that marks this fountain pen as being one that I like very much because we have this uh, two-step transitions from the cap to the barrel and uh, we have one complete turn and the fountain pen is uncapped. And this is the Yovo 14 karat gold nib which is uh, friction fitted on this Leonardo together with the ebonite feed. We have a few nib sizes available, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 stub. These nibs uh, make the cost of the fountain pen in the neighborhood of 500 euros, excluding VAT. And for the two specialty nibs, the elastic extra fine and the elastic fine, we have a 535 euro price point for the fountain pen. Like I told you, this nib is friction fitted inside uh, the section and I'm gonna try to demonstrate how to remove one of these nibs so you guys can better understand how it works. Just like I told you, this is a different way to review this fountain pen and I'm gonna try to uh, point out a few things that I usually don't have the necessary time to do it in other reviews or I didn't do it till now. I'm gonna use uh, some rubber or anything that offers you a better grip on the nib. You just grip the nib and try to pull in two uh, different ways, the body of the fountain pen gripping like so, and we have the nib together with the feed, and uh, let's try to insert them back together. We're going to put them like this, check if we have an alignment at the tines and we're going to press them and voila, everything should be fine. Let's resume to our fountain pen. And we have the section which is marked uh, by this ring right here. This is the beginning of the section. This is a very, very nice section which I uh, think it's very comfortable. Something to point out if you own a Leonardo pen, a Momento Zero or a Furore, they have the same size for a section and the same dimensions, proportions, and shape. So basically, if you own a Momento Zero and you ask yourself, will I find comfortable the Momento Zero Grande section? Say no more, just check, because it is the same section, minus this ring right here. So it's very, very good to know. Moving further, we have this uh, treads for the cap, which are very, very well polished, and they don't, um, feel odd or anything like this. The beginning of the barrel is marked by this ring right here. We have no engraving on the body of the fountain pen with Leonardo Officina Italiana. We can spot the beautiful material and this uh, very chitoyant minty green with a dash of purple and pink right here. And I do believe that this looks very, very 
like the name mother of pearl they're all tapering in towards this ring right here we have the piston knob this font pen is using a piston filling mechanism with a huge ink volume 1.5 milliliters which i do believe it's enough to get bored of the actual ink before uh, getting to uh, run out of moving further we have this pointy and phenol right here and this fountain pen is very easy to uh, fill up with ink you just uh, untwist the knob like this and you draw ink in the fountain pen but we're going to see that and how it's done in the writing sample now another thing that i want to point out is the fact that this fountain pen you can disassemble the end part of the piston and to clean it inside or grease it maintain it what better way to showcase this in the video right now live so we have a leonardo piston tool this is available on the penventure website you can order it so let's see how this operation is done safely because we want the patient in our case uh, the fountain pen to survive this operation and to be well so we're going to put those two pins of this uh, key in those slots let's uh, try now to close the system i'm gonna try to see if i do this like so and uh, voila this is it so this tool has to stay like this secure now i would point out that it's better to have something like this rubber or uh, a uh, paper towel or anything that offers you a better grip on the fountain pen you just grip it like so and let's unscrew the entire back assembly of the piston now that the treads are done i'm gonna gently pull this apart and uh, let's see this is the piston like you see in this uh, instance it comes very well lubricated uh, both this uh, piston treads and also the piston head which is made in uh, rubber you can exchange this and maintain your piston seal if that is a problem in the future be very careful not to get this ring lost because this is very important and will keep the back end assembly very well centered in the barrel of the fountain pen now let's put everything back together so like you've seen everything is done in aluminum very very steady and very very solid just don't try to twist this too much because uh, a little bit goes a long way let's untwist remove the key put everything back together and you pretty much have a fountain pen which is completely disassembled ready to be greased maintained cleaned you name it it's very easy to carry such a fountain pen using a leonardo pen sleeve and this is the one uh, with the color that i've uh, choose for my own fountain pen as you see if you daily carry such a fountain pen and uh, you take it with you everywhere it's very good to have such a leather uh, sleeve to protect it if you drop it or uh, if you put it in uh, the bag together with your keys a wallet or anything pretty much that sums up the details now let's have a few other fountain pens put side by side this pen let's take a closer look how it looks with a uh, etruria so it is a touch more longer like a centimeter than an etruria in classical shape homo sapiens and uh, pretty much they are quite similar let's have them uh, uncapped so basically that tells you that this is an oversized fountain pen it is not like super super big clunky and very hard to wield such a pen like for example this is a visconti speak easy and you can pretty much clearly see that this is a lot bigger than this primary manipulation leonardo momento zero grande and the overall dimensions of this fountain pen kept like this are 153 millimeters if we uncap the fountain pen like this it sits at 135 millimeters and if we post the fountain pen like so it has a length of 173 millimeters posted like so in use fully inked the fountain pen 
uh, is weighing 31 grams and unposted like so it uh, has 21 grams now i think it's time to get this fountain pen inked with some ink and i'm going to show you how you can very very easy ink this fountain pen today we are going to get to use one of my latest purchased uh, notebooks which i do think it's a very very nice paper to use as for ink of course i'm going to use my mont blanc uh, heritage to Montezuma because it is a minty uh, bluish green which I do think it fits very well with the actual color of the fountain pen and don't judge me I don't think I'm the only one who's using the same color for ink like the color of the fountain pen now let's uh, move the piston down by uh, moving the piston knob uh, counterclockwise now using the same motion we are going to rotate clockwise the piston knob and this way ink will be drawn in the fountain pen let's see if i have a napkin a paper towel near me yeah let's wipe the section clean off like this and i'm going to put the ink uh, right here and now let's give it a go and see how this fountain pen is writing usually i don't post my fountain pens but in this case i'm going to do an exception and post this fountain pen and we have the pen and this is the leonardo momento zero grande in primary manipulation of course by jonathan brooks and this is mother of pearl mop and we have the ink and this is mont blanc heritage to monte zuma the nib that i have here is the 14 karat gold yovo and this is a medium because I do miss a lot of medium uh, points in my collection. The paper, we are on 52 GSM Tomoy River paper. And this is a Hobonichi notebook that I recently acquired and I do love this paper. Now let's check the ink flow. From the get going, I would say that this is a wet fountain pen, but not a fire hose wet fountain pen quite tamed and very nice to use in normal writing on different papers that are lower in quality now let's have some normal figure of eights this is a um, in my opinion a true medium it is not uh, super super uh, heavy uh, going into broad territory let's have some flex figure of eights there is some line variation as you can see we have some ink pooling down and this ink has a very nice way to show this because it shades very nice but remember this is quite a stiff nib so don't try anything uh, too crazy because you can uh, very easy bend the nib for that you need to use an elastic extra fine or fine to have a little bit of line variation and to add character to your writing now let's see how it looks in reverse because a lot of you ask this so reverse a little bit scratchy but you can uh, pretty much tame it down to a fine so you can see this is normal writing and uh, this is reverse so there is some uh, line reduction offered by writing in reverse now the most important sentence in any and reviewer inventory now let's draw a line like so and let's go the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy 
dog. Very, very nice nib. I would say that has a little bit of feedback, but nothing unpleasant. And I do love how it writes and how it's going to perform. This is a very good daily writer and uh, it is a very practical fountain pen. Now, let me put everything together in some of my personal opinions. This fountain pen is part of the limited edition and uh, you can clearly see right here on the cap, opposite to the clip, we have the limited edition number out of, uh, let's see, 280 fountain pens. Now, Leonardo came up with the second batch for uh, the Mother of Pearl model. And why is that? Because we had a limited edition and now we have Mother of Pearl uh, second batch. Well, these fountain pens are in very high demand. So we have a lot of emails for people that missed out on owning one. Usually uh, one of the colors sells uh, very quick at the beginning and another color sets for a little bit of uh, time. So usually uh, for that color, that's going to be a very uh, quick sale. Uh, Leonardo does a second batch. So in this case, we have a second batch for Mother of Pearl and I'm very happy. With the second batch, we have a very nice opportunity to try new trim colors. So usually for this uh, colors, for this collection in the limited edition, we had only gold or silver. For the second batch in the Mother of Pearl, we have ruthenium black, which I am a huge fan of and I really want to see how a Mother of Pearl looks with a ruthenium black trim. So if we think just alike, place down your pre-order because I would love to see it in person and probably uh, I will try to uh, keep one for myself as well. Another color would be rose gold, which is a little bit more elegant and aesthetic and would look uh, insane on this fountain pen. So I dare you to try this new trim colors on the second batch. I'm one of the persons that don't mind if I don't see a limited edition number uh, stamped or engraved anywhere on the fountain pen and I do uh, think these pens are very very nice. It's resin and Jonathan Brooks has this resin down to an art. It's very steady, it's very very solid, it's built very well, the nibs are nice, it's writing very consistent, the ebonite feed has a very rich ink flow. Now you can disassemble the back part of the piston, clean, maintain your fountain pen. That adds a lot, a lot of good points to Leonardo as a design. Overall, that's my opinion. And uh, whenever I think a fountain pen looks that good, feels that nice, I want to have one. I started as being an Italian fountain pen collector. Now, if I look at uh, my collection a little bit uh, closer, I can see that uh, I can call myself a Leonardo collector very, very quickly. Pretty much that sums up my opinion regarding this fountain pen. Thank you for spending your time on the Venture YouTube channel. If you find this video and videos like this useful, don't forget to give them a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the algorithm to reach out to many more just like you. Down below, you will find the links for uh, the fountain pen. If you want to place down a pre-order and get the fountain pen in a custom uh, trim color, uh, please do so. Down below, you'll find the links and uh, pretty much that's it. Also down below, you'll find the links for our website, uh, our social media accounts, emails, phone number, anything and everything that you may need to get in contact with me. And I know that uh, many of you that are watching my videos are not subscribed. So if you want to uh, support this endeavor, passion, story, pen venture, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right now. Just click here and turn the notification bell on. And if you want to see more quality content from pen venture and myself, you have this video right here. Click and enjoy. My name is Amy and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye bye.